All right, this one, uh, the next, the next set of uh, James Deans is going to be this. Higgins Black Magic Waterproof Ink. I also have non-waterproof ink. And this one is a bottle of mix of 50-50 of each of those. So I'll do one of each. So this is waterproof ink. It's pretty chunky and old because I haven't used it in a while. So I'm just gonna do my best. I am just trying to fill the color in. I did not grab a brush, but what I would use is a brush normally with this. And I'm just attacking the hair because it's a nice large area. Do the eyebrows. Let me try to do the hatch kind of thing. I haven't done this in such a long time. It's pretty trippy. I'm not gonna give him highlights on his pupils. I'm gonna give him highlights on the edges of his um, eyelids. And in terms of hatching, I'm going to just get close on the spaces and go further apart over here where the highlight needs to be. Try to keep it nice and dark. Ink is not my uh, primary medium, but a lot of people are into comics and the thick lines of comics give people the um, edges that they need for comic books because back in the day they didn't have digital printing it was all offset so you need thick lines to contain the color and uh, well, that's kind of largely gone away. You've got people doing digital inking now. You've got um, all kinds of methods of working. The crosshatch is so time consuming to me, you know? It's, ink is pretty forgiving, but I'm going to go solid with the nostrils. But you can still screw up a lot with ink. There's always the question of which direction do I go with this? And you got to keep dipping. Oh, by the way, I don't mind if you use uh, pens, like pens that are loaded with ink already, as opposed to curl quill dipping. I remember in school we had to do figure drawing this way. I got real comfortable with it. Not as comfortable as I would have liked, but good enough to get the assignment done. Not something I see myself doing in the future quite a bit. And I'm trying to go really fast just so I don't bore everybody. This makes it easier to uh, to get through. There's like so much you have to learn in school. I think it's easier if your teachers do demos 
and I think that's close enough for getting the, the gist of the color on him. I'm going to get the which we call his sweater down here a bit more. I'm pressing harder, which is giving me thicker lines. And you can see chunks of ink coming up. That's the other thing too. It's like it's pretty forgiving ink because nobody expects it to be perfect, you know. There's like so much that can go wrong. You could have a drop of ink fall somewhere. And it's chunky. This ink is chunky because it's old. Now remember, this is water proof. So water will not affect it, at least once it's dry. We can test that theory, and I'm going to test it right now. I'm going to take my paper towel here that I just used for um, the Prisma thing. I'm going to take a little bit of water. I don't know if this is going to spray my. Nah, it's broken. I gotta get some drops of water onto the paper towel. I gotta buy another sprayer. That's disappointing. Now, because it's waterproof, it should not move. It does move a little bit. You can activate it. Maybe it's not completely dry, but it doesn't run or bleed as much as the other one. But that's one way of getting your ink wash going. But what I was going to show was the Mix 50-50, um, how it's affected. But I'm going to go to the non-waterproof ink right now so that we can compare. <laughs> 